you have an idea, a concept, and you don't want to compromise it, you don't want to dilute it. But we want Cross on film to be the Cross that you've come to expect from the comic books. Um, we're pretty passionate about that. We want to make sure that it is what you've come to expect. Not diluted, not watered down at the same time. Uh, not so bloody and gory that it's unrecognizable. Not somebody else's idea of cross. It has to be what we did in the comic book. Uh, that's what you're going to see on screen. Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again. Now, normally every two weeks I have another video covering the Cross franchise coming out. That is either going to be a video where I am doing a proper review of one of those books, issue by issue, or it is going to be one of my discussion videos where I have a special guest come on and we read through a specific volume and discuss it. But this time we're going to do something a little bit different, because here recently I began to notice that in the comments section on a lot of my different videos, discussions about a crossed film, either desires to have one, or people mentioning that, yeah, in fact, a while back, Garth Emmett did announce that there was going to be a live-action adaptation of the crossed franchise, or at least of his original story, but we haven't gotten it. So, I figure that that is, you know, something that might be worth discussing here on the channel and looking into a little bit further. So, we're going to be diving into that today. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous Cross content and you'd like to check that out, a link for it is popping up right now. That's a playlist that covers just about all the stuff that I've done on Cross. So, without any further ado, let's dive into what we know about the Cross live-action movie and web series. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. At C2E2 2010, Garth Ennis made the announcement that Crossed had been picked up for a big screen adaptation by Kickstart Productions, not being funded through Kickstarter, as some have interpreted this statement. Kickstart Productions is a company who brought us films and shows such as Wanted, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, Wolverine and the X-Men, Painkiller Jane, Speed Racer The Next Generation, The Amazing Screw on Head, Voltron Force, and Preacher, just to name a few. Michael DeLuca, Jason Netter, and Trigger Street Productions were also tapped to help independently finance and produce the adaptation before shopping it around to distributors. In a subsequent interview with MTV News, Garth Ennis would elaborate. We're at the very, very early days. I've written a screenplay, a second draft really, so I've done that. But in terms of casting or any type of production, we're not there yet, so it's very hard to say how much I'll be involved. Ennis would go on to acknowledge that there's certainly reason to believe that a studio might want to tone the product down a little bit. It's hard to say. On one hand, it's an incredibly simple story. You look at it and you think it'd be hard to make a mess of it. But in terms of content, yes. It's possible they might want to tone something down. But at the moment, I'm very encouraged by everyone I've spoken to at Kickstart. They get it. They like Cross for what it is. No one has ever given me the impression they just want an image they can stick on a t-shirt or a title without a story. They like the characters, they like the villains, and they like the notion of the cross. So that's encouraging. As always, it's hard to say where it'll end up, though. Ennis's script covered half of the original 10-issue run. He effectively had to chop the story in half because it's a 240-page comic, and you want a screenplay to be a little bit closer to somewhere around 110 to 150 pages. So he essentially concentrated on the more serious, darker, tragic elements of the story and edited out some of the comedy. The decision to focus on the horror element was as much a matter of storytelling technique as space. Ennis would state, When you're talking about a shorter story, you can't really take those transitions without it being very jarring. Funny one minute, tragic the next. That doesn't really work, so I had to decide, is this a horror comedy or a straight horror? and I decided to go with a straight horror story. 
This would be the comic book writer's first foray into screenwriting, and all things considered, he seems to have been overall happy with his work, commenting that, It worked well for me because I think it's such a simple story. Here is the monster, here's what it looks like, and it's instantly recognizable. It only does one thing, and our heroes only have one imperative, to stay the hell away from them. After this point, there are several articles released from various news outlets reporting on the announcement, but for the most part, it's just the same information regurgitated and rephrased for the sake of clicks without giving any really new insight into the development of the film or what would come next. The next thing we would hear about the project would come in 2012, when at New York Comic Con and in an interview with News Joe Rama, Ennis had this to say. So you just made a big announcement downstairs. Uh, what's That's going right. on? Um, William Christensen, publisher of Avatar, and I uh, did a panel where we announced that we are going to be doing uh, live action crossed webisodes oh, with wow. a view to uh, moving on to a feature. That's awesome. And we're going to be, hopefully, if all goes to plan, uh, shooting in the spring for a re uh, release uh, late next year. That's, That's going to be a crazy, crazy thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so many questions. So is it going to be, uh, how, many, um, how many episodes are you going to Well, we're going to start with six. We're going we're gonna okay. to try and do a season of six. Um, we'll see how those go. Um, they'll be released online for free. Yeah. Oh, nice. uh, I'm sure there'll be a, a DVD release too with all sorts of additional whistles and bells, but that's where <laughs> we're starting. And the idea then is to build towards a feature. That's awesome. That you'll uh, try to sell or try to like produce on your own? Uh, the plan is for, uh, I mean, William's talking to a number of people. He He's the one who handles all the, uh, the black magic when it yeah. comes to <laughs> fundraising and production and so on. But um, I would write and direct with William as, oh, nice. I suppose, executive producer. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. What's the uh, source material for the web series? Well, it, what we would probably do is perhaps use a couple of things you've seen before and a couple of new things oh, okay. and, and weave them into a narrative. Uh, it, you're going to be talking about five, six-minute episodes, yeah. um, so that will be room for um, some, uh, some nice little vignette stories, you know, what, what I like to think of as bursts of violence. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Great little, to think of any piece of A little bit of blood, a little bit of plot, yeah. some good characters, hopefully, that we can we can follow through these things. Right. Yeah. That's going to be a challenge. I mean, that one of the great things about that comic was all the crazy total anarchy and madness mm. happening on, and then also, like you mentioned, the, the characters that mm. you're like, Praying, make it through. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's going to be a lot to do. Yeah, well, I, I wanted it to have. Um, I wanted it to be genuinely horrifying. I didn't want it. <laughs> I said this on the panel earlier. I, I never wanted Cross to be something that could be watered down, lightened up. Uh, I didn't want it to feature a monster that. <sighs> that the readership could make friends with in the way that vampires, werewolves, <laughs> okay, zombies sure, sure. have become kind of softened and yeah. familiar. Oh, yeah. And I mean, you know, vampires in particular, they're now pale people that young girls fall in love yeah. with. Yeah. Um, so I wanted it to be genuinely horrifying, and that's something that would have to continue into this. Whoa. Now, is it just me, or in that clip, does Garth Ennis seem a little bit hesitant or uneasy talking about this? Mind you, this could just be me with the ability of hindsight, now having had all these years of silence, because this is the last thing that we would officially hear about the Cross live-action adaptation. And again, there would be multiple other little articles that would come out here and there, but it, most of it was just the same information being thrown back at us. Now, I've had some people tell me that this movie is now apparently going to be released in 2022 and is going to be directed by David Lowry of Pete's Dragon remake and the upcoming Green Knight. However, I would like to point out that the only source stating this is a fandom movie idea wiki without any legitimate news or entertainment sources reporting him in any way, shape, or form attached to the project. And considering his next greenlit project is an upcoming reinterpretation of Peter Pan uh, with Disney, the Peter Pan story, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that him being affiliated with Cross is highly, highly unlikely. Right now on IMDb, the film is listed as in development with any details being locked behind the IMDb Pro account. But as it states even on its general access page, any information on the Pro account is subject to change. 
So for all intents and purposes, the project seems to be dead in the water, and like so many things in the world of the Crossed, there doesn't seem to be a satisfying answer or a happy ending in sight. So with such little info out there, all we can really do now is speculate. And as I did in my video for The Crow Lazarus starring DMX, which a link will be popping up for right now, that's exactly what I'm going to do now, is speculate reasonably. No conspiracy theory shit or anything like that, just a lot of things and a lot of points that people have already made in the discussions and the comment section of my other videos, but they are valid points that deserve to be expanded upon. So, first up, budget. Now, when you just look at Cross, on the face of it, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that would have an exorbitant budget. You know, I mean, like, people oftentimes equate it to, like, Walking Dead. But Cross isn't going to have the budget of Walking Dead. And the reason Cross isn't going to have the budget of Walking Dead is because it won't bring in the same amount of audience. Just frankly speaking, Walking Dead sold more comics in terms of numbers than Cross does, or has. And it was a phenomenon in the comics, whereas, like, I love Cross, and clearly you watching this love Cross, but it's not like Walking Dead where people who normally would never read a zombie comic read it. It's just, that's not what it is. So the numbers as a base aren't there. Then you also get into the issue of the actual content of the material. So you can't put that on regular TV. Yes, you could probably put it on Amazon or something like that, but still, when you look at the other shows, even the more extreme ones, things like The Boys or Invincible, because of the world that they're setting up, there is a higher probability of more people outside of the initial comic fan pace giving that a shot. With Cross, you basically have the comic fans and horror fans, you know, but it's not something that, like, a casual horror fan is going to watch. It's someone who's hardcore into it. These other shows are things that people who, like, don't give a crap about comics, but, like, yes, they go and see the Marvel movies or the Superman or Batman movie. Like, they'll go see those, you know. And so, like, you can maybe get one of those people interested in Invincible or even the boys. But, you know, that's a big difference, you know. And so... The amount of money that you'd think would go into this is not going to be cheap. Not if you want it done even remotely good. So, like, let's just take one example because I don't want to go through the whole thing. Because, yes, there's a lot of things in Cross that are very small and very isolated. And you can easily shoot those bits for relatively cheap. But even just the opening set piece from the original Cross book by Ennis that takes place in the little town, you know, and then, like, everything starts going crazy, the cop car crashes, the plane comes down, all that kind of stuff. That alone right there is several million dollars for a day of that. And I'm imagining, in the way that sequence plays out in the book, like, that would have to probably be at least three or four days. So, you know, that's already... A pretty large bit of budget because again when you're talking about horror movies you're not looking at the same kind of numbers that you are for superhero movies you know or even just like action movies like you can't rely on those kind of numbers and there's a history of horror movies making good money if they're made cheap enough but they never have really very rarely does a horror movie reach the kind of numbers of like a big sci-fi movie or an action movie or a superhero movie and then that's your other problem now is the metric for what success is has changed. And what I mean by that is there was a time where if you made a movie and you made double your budget, that was considered to be a success. Maybe not like the grandest success, but that was considered to be a success. And nowadays from like most producers in like even moderately sized production companies, if you make a movie and only double what you spent on the movie in terms of your profits, that's not considered to be a success. I mean, yeah, you made your money back, so it's not a loss, but it's not a win either. That's not enough. You need at least five or ten times what your budget was in order to make that worth your time and effort to continue pursuing. And unfortunately, that's just not something they can rely on from cross. And again, in order to get the effects right on this, and not just do everything in CGI, do it actual practical effects, that's going to take time. So again, it's just one of those things of like, the budget for this movie would have to be, you know, at least 80 or 90 million dollars to get it done properly. 
the amount of money to do it right is counterintuitive to the amount of money that projections would most likely indicate that this movie would make. I mean, shit, man. I've been trying to get a cross fan film going for, like, months and months and months now, but even for, like, a five or ten minute short that, like, I've come up with, like, even for that, I'm looking at a budget of, like, twelve to fifteen thousand dollars, and that's, like, with minimal effects and minimal characters and a lot of people who I know and have worked with before agreeing to work for way cheaper than they would ever work just to help me get it done. And, like, yeah, it's not as cheap as you would think. It's not as simple as, like, you know, shooting a slasher movie in the 70s. The, like, the whole infrastructure for filmmaking is different. Like, all the hoops you have to jump through in terms of safety and all these things that have made filmmaking better also make it more expensive and make it more difficult to do. Crossed would not be cheap to make, and it's just not going to get them the kind of money that they're looking for. So, another issue that this film would have, unfortunately, had to face is the fact that between 2010 and now, there's been a pretty significant shift in the socio-political landscape, shall we say. You could get away with Crossed, and more so than get away with Crossed, you could convince people with money that Crossed was worth getting away with back in 2010. Because, you know, you would sell them on the idea of longevity of the movie, like point to movies like Cannibal Holocaust and things of that nature that have been banned and have been a super extreme, but in the long run have made money for some people. They have. Nowadays, that's not the case. Because whereas in the past, bad publicity would just make your movie infamous, and it would mean that for years it would be stuck in people's head until they were finally able to track it down. Nowadays, controversy or bad press about your movie for things such as depictions of sexual assault or uh, misogyny or racism or anything like that, all those things can now completely torpedo your movie and ensure that your movie that might have had a chance of making just enough money for it to be worth doing is now pretty much worthless to you. And yeah, you might really care about the movie you're making, but let's face it, for most producers, they do want to like the idea, and they do want a movie that is good, but really good is measured by dollars. So, and with the amount of producers attached to this, yeah, that could be an issue. And then tying into that once again, as I said, we were going to come back to the producers, and now we're back to the producers, Trigger Street Productions! co-chaired by Kevin Spacey. So, if you're making a product that already you think might get some backlash, and then one of the people who's helping produce that movie is accused of some of the things that would probably be drawing negative attention on your movie, number one, you might decide to pump the brakes, and number two, it's probably going to get a lot harder for you to bring more outside money into that project. So, yeah. For this movie to get made, it would definitely have to be toned down. Quite a bit, in fact. And, again, in that little interview segment, Garth Ennis says that he's very encouraged by the people at, you know, Kickstart Productions, uh, but, like, that's one group of the many groups of producers who were, like, behind this thing and trying to get it going because it was going to take a lot of money to make this thing happen. So, yeah, it would have gotten toned down because you've got to try to bring in an audience outside of your original core audience and even past the fans of horror. Those are really the people. That's where they're going to get a large portion of their money from because there are more of them than there are of us. They're going to tone it down, and people might point, and they have pointed to, like, The Walking Dead. Well, look at Walking Dead. Walking Dead, sure, the show has things that at the time that show came out, we did not think you could get away with. But even that show is incredibly toned down compared to the comic that it's based on. They even do some of the exact same story beats, but the way in which they tell it is done in a way to de-emphasize certain more extreme elements of those story beats. You know, the shots they choose, what characters they choose to have that happen to, and the focus we put on that can totally change the emotional interpretation that we're putting on that scene. So in many, many ways that has been toned down, and the issue you come to with Crossed is 
if you're going to tone it down, is it even worth doing? Because if you tone it down and you remove some of the more problematic elements from it, what you essentially end up with is 28 Days Later, where they're not zombies, they're still alive, but they're really angry and they want to just rip you to pieces. Like, that's what you get. Despite the fact that it is probably the most problematic thing, unbridled, unchecked sex drive of the cross and how brutal and disgusting it is, is an entire extra level to the terror of these creatures. The whole idea that basically it is one of the infected from 28 Days Later, but instead of killing you, they're just going to stab you to make new holes to fuck you in. And that's how they will eventually kill you. And while they're doing that, some others might come up and start eating you while you're alive. It's like it takes all of these very visceral experiences from different subgenres of horror where they focus on these kind of things happening and it's just pushed it all into one thing and that's what gives it an extra layer an extra little element that makes it a little bit more than your general kind of post-apocalyptic zombie movie or your general post-apocalyptic outbreak movie it is crossed and there's nothing that's quite like it and to make that into a movie, you're not going to make any money, man. You're just not going to, especially today. It's not going to happen. And I get the feeling that while Garth Ennis definitely has been willing to allow other things to be adapted and kind of altered to a certain degree, I think he's aware of what makes Crossed what it is. And if you're going to remove that, then is it even worth the paycheck he's going to get? Right on, children of the screen. So that's everything I know and everything I think about the potential of a crossed live-action movie. Do I want one? A movie or a show? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Whether it be live-action or be an animation, it'd be really cool. But I do feel like all the things that make Cross special are one of those things that make it feel like something that can only exist in a comic book. There are certain stories that are made for comics that just don't translate. And you can translate part of them and maybe still get a good story in it, but it's still going to be missing all those elements that just don't translate. And I feel like Cross just might be one of those books. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And are, is there any info that I missed that you're aware of? Let me know that right down there as well. And if you like this video, please leave a like and share it with some friends. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you can check out all the Dope Cross content I've got coming out every two weeks. Thank you very much, children on the screen. Hope you have a good one. Nerd Scum, out.